Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In this video, we will look at the second type of discrete probability distribution, which is the Poisson distribution. The Poisson probability distribution basically describes the number of times some event occurs during a specified interval. Okay, so the interval may be in terms of time or distance or areas or volume. Okay, so here are a few examples. For instance, the number of misspelled words per page. So what's the occurrence? Misspelled words. What's the interval? Per page. Second example, the number of vehicles sold a day. So what's the occurrence? Vehicles sold. The interval? One day. Okay, and here's another example. The number of goals scored in a football match. So what is the occurrence? The occurrence is goals scored, and the interval is one football match. Now, both the binomial and Poisson probability distributions are discrete type of probability distributions in that their random variables, or x, um, is a result of counts. Okay, so if you remembered, for binomial distribution, the x is basically the number of successes that occurred. Okay, in our binomial experiment. Whereas for a Poisson distribution, x, or the random variable, is the number of times an event occurs during a specific interval. Okay, so this second part, the interval part, is the, uh, the distinguishing feature that makes it Poisson. But for binomial distribution, we've got four characteristics, right? Number one is because there's only two outcomes, right? For a binomial distribution, there's only two outcomes. Uh, X is the number of success. And then the second characteristic is N is a fixed number of trials. So they will give you um, the number of trials that the experiment um, undertakes. And thirdly, there's a probability of success, which is pi, which is the same in all trials. And finally, there's also the characteristics of independence, whereby the outcome of one trial does not affect the outcomes of other trials. Whereas for the Poisson distribution, okay, so this is basically um, its properties. Firstly, the random variable is the number of times an event occurs. Okay, during a specific or specified interval. Secondly, the probability of occurrence is proportional to the size of the interval. So what it means is, perhaps we are given the initial rate at which something occurs, but then if there's a change in our interval, we would need to change the probability of the occurrence. Okay? Um, and thirdly, the occurrence and non-occurrence in any interval is independent um, of the occurrence and non-occurrence in any other interval. So if you notice that this third characteristic of the Poisson distribution is very similar to the fourth characteristics of the binomial distribution, uh, which focuses on independence of the outcomes from one trial or one interval from the other. Now, similar to the binomial probability distribution, there are generally three things that we could ask you when it comes to solving Poisson probability distribution questions. Firstly, they will ask you to find probabilities, okay? And there are two ways to find probabilities. One is by using the formula, okay, which we will look at later. And secondly, we can also use the Poisson table to solve probabilities uh, that involve the Poisson distribution. Uh, besides probabilities, we can also ask you to find the mean for the Poisson probability distribution as well as the standard deviation. Okay, so here let me just zoom out a bit so you can see this is what we learned in the last video. Okay, so this is uh, involving the binomial distribution. So this is Poisson. Now there is a slight difference in the way to find or to calculate the mean and standard deviation. Okay, now how do we find the mean for a distribution that follows the Poisson? Um, probability distribution, okay, so to find the mean, it's similar to binomial, okay, which is n pi. And how do we find the standard deviation? Okay, this is where it's a bit different. The standard deviation for Poisson distribution is also n pi square root, okay? So this is um, the difference. As I mentioned to you just now, there are two ways to find probabilities uh, for the Poisson distribution. Okay, so one is by using the formula. So as you can see here, this is the formula that we can use to solve Poisson probability distribution questions. As you can see here, there's one important item that we need to know, uh, which is mu. Okay, so mu here refers to the rate at which an event occurs. Okay, so usually in the question, they will give us uh, information uh, pertaining to this um, mu. Okay, um, so once we have this value, we can just find the negative exponent of it. Okay, and the x here is basically our random variable, which is the number of times that event occurs 
Now here is a Poisson distribution table, okay? So it looks uh, a bit different than the binomial distribution table. As you can see here, for the Poisson distribution, uh, we are not concerned with n, we're not concerned with pi, okay? So what we are concerned uh, in a Poisson distribution is just the mu, okay? Which is the rate at which the event occurs. Um, here are several limited numbers of mu uh, given to us in the table. Okay, we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, uh, all the way up to 0 0.9 and of course we have different values of x okay depending on which uh, box we're looking at so just like the binomial distribution as long as we can identify what is the value of our mu okay in the table as well as the value of x then we can use the table to solve the question but if you don't have the mu then we need to use the formula now let's do an example of a Poisson probability distribution a book containing 500 pages has 750 misprints, or typos. Question A. What is the average number of misprints per page? B. Find the probability that on page 427, it contains no misprints, and it contains exactly four misprints. Question C. Find the probability that more than the average number of misprints take place. And finally, find the probability that on pages 427 and 428 uh, that they both will contain no misprints. So first things first, how do we identify or how do we know that this question follows the Poisson distribution? Okay, so it's relatively simple um, because as you can see here, the only information given to you is the occurrence of something, which is the number of misprints that happened, and the interval per page. So we can start by defining the random variable. Okay, so x here is basically the number of uh, misprints, right? So this is our event or occurrence, the number of misprints. And what is our interval per page? Okay, so this is our x. Now we know that x follows a Poisson distribution. So what's important in a Poisson distribution is basically the rate at which this occurrence happened. Okay, so how can we find it? So basically, we're answering uh, the first question, what is the average number of misprints per page? Okay, so by answering part A, we can actually find our mu. Okay, because we know that for 500 pages, there are 750 misprints. So what is the number of misprints for one page? Yes, we just divide it. Okay, so we divide 750 misprints over the total number of pages uh, that we have. So here we will have 1.5. Okay, so 1.5 is our mu, the number of misprints per page. Now moving on to question B, find the probability that on page 427 it contains no misprints. So this page number is um, not that important, okay, it could be any page number. What's important is we're looking at one page. So let's write it down. We want to find, because we already defined x as the number of misprints per page, so we want to find what is the probability that um, on a particular one page there is no misprints, okay? Um, so here, let's take a look first. Mu is 1.5, so if you look at the table, okay, the Poisson table here, there is no 1.5 mu. Okay, there is uh, no. So therefore, what it means is we cannot use the table, so we have to use the formula. So the formula is mu to the power of x uh, e to the power of minus mu over x factorial. Okay, so let's just um, put in all of the figures. Mu, we've um, calculated before as 1.5 to the power of x. x here is defined as 0, so we can put it 0. e to the power of minus 1.5 over x factorial. Okay, so press your calculator. So basically here we can see we have three items, the first item. You know, anything to the power of 0 is 1. Here, you need to press the calculator to get this figure. And again, 0 factorial is also 1. So we will have 0 0.2231, okay? So the probability that there is no misprint in one page is uh, about 22%. Now, the second part of um, part B is they want us to find the probability that there is exactly 4 misprints on one page okay so just like before we just write uh, the formula again okay mu again is 1.5 okay 1.5 to the power of x x here is defined as 4 so we put 4 here e to the power of minus 1.5 over 4 factorial okay so again press your calculator we will have 0 0.047 okay if you notice that i normally keep 
the answers to either three or four decimal spaces. Okay, so that's done, part B. Okay, the next question is, find the probability that there are more than the average number of misprints. Remember, the average number of misprints is 1.5, right? We've calculated just now, here. Okay, so this is the average number of misprints, 1.5. So for part C, okay, we want to find the probability that X is greater than 1.5. Okay. Right, so what does this mean? Now remember, guys, Poisson is a discrete probability distribution. So what that means is if we were to imagine a number line here, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay, so the, the number, okay, if it's a discrete uh, number, it takes on certain values, right? So here, if we're finding a value which is more than 1.5, what it means is, so here's 1.5. So basically, we're looking at the probability that um, x is 2, the probability that x is 3, the probability that x is 4, and so on and so forth. Okay, here's our number line again. Now, x here is the number of misprints, right? So it's given to us in the question the total number of misprints is 750. Okay, that's a huge number. Okay, so I'm just putting a dot, dot, dot here. All right, so if you're asked to find what is the probability that x is more than 1.5 or 1.5, which is here, what we basically want is the probability that x is 2 plus probability that x is 3 plus probability x is 4 plus so on and so forth until the probability that x is 750. That's a lot of calculations. So the alternate method, instead of adding these probabilities, which is a lot, what we can do is we can take 1, which is the entire thing, right, 100%, 1 minus these two, okay? So get what I mean? So this is the total. Instead of adding all of this individually, what we can do is we take 1 minus these two. So doesn't it leave us with the rest, what we want? Yeah. So this is basically what we're doing here, right? So to find the probability that x is greater than 1.5, and since 1.5 doesn't technically exist, so it means we have to start with 2, okay? So it's basically uh, 1 minus these two, which is 1 minus the probability that x is 0 uh, plus... Uh, probably the x is 1. Okay, so how do we solve this? We just uh, plug in the numbers into the formula, just like before. Okay, the probability x is 0 is, we've already calculated just now, it's 0 0.2231, so we can just put it here. Okay, what we don't have is the probability that x is equals to 1, so we can write it down here. Uh, 1.5 to the power of 1, e to the power of minus 1.5 over... 1 factorial, okay, so this is basically 1 minus 0 0.2231 plus here, if you um, calculate this part, we will get 0 0.3347, okay, 1 minus the sum of these two probabilities, which is 0 0.5578, so we will have our final answer as 0 0.442, leaving it to three decimal spaces. So in other words, the probability that there's more than the average number of misprints is about 44%. And the last question, find the probabilities that on these two pages, there will contain no misprints. Okay, so now in this case, our interval has changed. Okay, guys, so previously, I when we calculated the mu just now, 1.5, it is for one page per page. But now we're dealing with two pages. So now recall the second property uh, of the Poisson distribution, the probability of an occurrence is proportional to the size of the interval. So in our example here, we can see that the interval has changed. Okay, so we're not just dealing with one page now, instead we're dealing with two pages. So what that means is we need to adjust the mu. Okay, our mu is no longer 1.5. Our mu is now basically uh, 1.5 times 2. Why? Because now we're dealing with two pages. Okay, so basically our mu becomes 3. Okay, so this is important. Now, 3, if you look at the table, it exists. Okay, so there is a 3 here on the table. So now uh, we can use the table to solve the last question. Okay, so for the last question, we were, uh, were asked to find the probability that for two pages, there is no misprints. Okay, but now our mu is 3. Okay, so we can look at the table. Okay, mu is 3. And x is 0. Okay, so our answer is 0 0.0498.
0 0.0498. And since we use the table, we can put here by table or using the table.